Hi everyone! We have now finished all renovations, so we are once and for all tackling our small, narrow London garden and turning it into a little slice of tropical paradise. Hiring professionals to help us with the foundations and patios and designing ourselves a grassless, biodiverse habitat that's perfect for us, our dog and the wildlife around us. is in full swing ish we've had a slight delay i can't remember if i mentioned this in the last video but my builder texted me the quote at 8 p.m on a thursday i accepted it the guys started the following morning at 7 30 a.m so it was like go 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 and i had to order all the materials i ordered the tile slabs the bricks and all the pebbles to landscape the garden and unfortunately the tiles didn't show up in time so we have a couple of days where the builders are slowly finishing that fence and they're working on a carpentry job next door for my neighbor so we're kind of like doing a project again together like how we both built our garden offices with the same company so it's worked out okay in the meantime freddie and i are going to be working on a little project of our own in the garden so we've got a little bit of clearing up to do and we are going to be building some things I am working with Bosch Home and Garden on a sustainability project. So it is part of their Live Sustainable Like a Bosch campaign. And they have encouraged us to create a few sustainable DIY projects using any leftover materials we might have in our house and garden. So perfect timing because we have some spare wood from the office build and we really didn't want to get rid of it. It was beautiful scaffolding boards. So we're going to be creating something really fun with it and i thought i would give you a little tutorial because it was actually so easy to do and i am so impressed with the end result <laughs> bosch home and garden have lent me their tools and we are gonna get building tools have arrived and i've got the power pack so i'm gonna actually just charge up the power pack now so this 18v battery is not only compatible with these tools I've got today like the sander and the cordless jigsaw but also it's compatible with many other tools from other brands as well. I also have the universal impact drill so we're going to be using that as well to piece it all together. I was thinking of doing like a little butterfly garden to attract butterflies and insects and bees into the garden to create more of a bit of biodiversity in our like heavily concreted garden. Um, so yeah, I found a little tutorial online and we're gonna follow it. Hopefully it works out well. <laughs> plan is to use the scaffolding boards on the sides where it's gonna be visible. We actually have this leftover decking. That's gonna be the base. We've got these smaller buttons which are gonna sit internally holding up the horizontal scaffolding boards that are gonna run alongside. Perfect, so this is now going to be our base. I think it's 120. So we're going to measure it. Ruler, pen. Let's go! Now that all sides are built, I'm just standing up the horizontal edge and then the side, and then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it in here. And then that is gonna hold that together. I'm trying to do this all one-handed, so I'm gonna put this back on the tripod and then drill that in. Here she is. So the next job is to fill it with matting, staple it to the sides, and then fill it with compost. Just picked up our bricks from being cute. We've also managed to park at the other end of the parking lot, and this weighs a ton. And I'm doing nothing to help it. This is one thing I'd never considered when we went and picked up 150 bricks, was how it might affect the suspension of Freddie's car. So we've got to get all of these in here, one by one. Okay, so here is my bee-friendly and butterfly-friendly plant haul. I'll go through them when we're planting them. But I just adore this. Look at these beautiful stems. They're all kind of curved. 
made little pockets in the bricks for them so that they have every fighting chance of getting home alive. It is now time to fill the box. So we've got this matting, which is gonna be lining the whole inside of it. And then we have got loads of debris from our recycling and from the garden that we are gonna fill in the base. So the reason we put all of this in is so that you don't actually have to fill the whole trough with soil, which will get super heavy. So it kind of just like bulks it out a bit in the base. And then I think we're gonna do like that much soil on the top. Stuff like bottles and plastic. And we've got some leftover insulation from the office. <laughs> friendly flowers so that they attract the bees and the butterflies to the garden. A lot of the time, if you're at the garden centre, this bee friendly logo here lets you know that these are bee friendly plants. So they're the ones that insects and pollinators are drawn to. So that's handy as well. Or you could just Google it. I will link the website that I use below to read up on all the plants that are bee and butterfly friendly that we bought for our garden. It was really helpful. Um, or you can just look out for that logo. I also have got a plant called Nemesia. It doesn't have the logo on there, but it was one of the plants on that article. And it says that butterflies love this. So I got a, a yellowy lilac and then I got then I got a purple one as well. So I'm gonna put them in there. So it's like a super butterfly friendly. <laughs> Can't stop won't stop with the building we have found some more wood so we are going to make a little bug hotel for the fence measuring up the sides to make the bee hotel and i have found some bamboo stems that were just in our garden that used to be like plant pronged like holding up plants and they are hollow on the inside I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> but we're going to cut them cut them down to size and then stuff them in the little bee hotel and hope that our friendly guests show up for a stay. It actually seems like quite a fairly simple task so I definitely think we took on the harder project first by trying to build that trough which is looking pretty good. So I'm going to talk you through how we do this as well. To start you need to measure out four pieces of wood the exact same size and cut them down. These are going to make up the four edges of the bee hotel. It's important that they are the exact same size as this makes up the perfect square of the house. So where I use the universal saw because this is feather edge wood and it's quite like flimsy it's all flecked at the ends I don't know if you can see it there it's not that noticeable but I have got the handheld sander so I'm gonna give it a go um this is really cool because you recharge the battery let me show you you just charge this up at the tool station and then slot it in like that and it's on and then you can take the sander anywhere and you don't actually have to plug it into the wall, which is really handy. So I'm going to get sanding. After sanding, we pieced together the four edges and drilled them together with two screws on each side. Once the square was made, we then needed to measure at the back, so drew around the box and cut out with the jigsaw. I'm now going to cut all the bamboo. So I was out in my skip last night and uh, chatting with a few neighbours and talking about how I needed bamboo. And this guy just came back with loads of bamboo from his garden. What you want is the thicker the bamboo stems, the better, because then the cavities inside are going to be wider for bees to visit and nest. So I took a permanent marker and I marked out the length of each bamboo stem and then I took the jigsaw and cut them. This was such a quick process with the jigsaw 
and made it really quick and efficient. We then also drilled larger holes in blocks of wood so we could have a variety of sizes. So we're just popping all the bamboo cuts in here. We also did a few cuts like this um, so that they can sit just randomly in around the bamboo as well. Now I'm just filling the gaps between with the bamboo shoots. You actually don't need any glue or anything for this, just you have to pack the bamboo shoots really tightly and they will just hold everything in. It's looking so good. And then we put the roof on and to hold up the roof, we put this extra block here. So we decided to put a hole in it as well and that is the penthouse suite, obviously. Right, last one in and there she is, our B Hotel. Thank you.